Hey, it's Cam again with another tutorial for HowDigitalPaint.com. Now in episode 8, continuing the series on digital painting in Photoshop and looking at Photoshop color. So firstly, we'll look at document color modes. When you're making your document, you'll notice the option to change the color mode. So most of these are pretty obvious. I'll just explain them briefly. Bitmap is a redundant mode, so as you can see you can only have one bit color. Really, you wouldn't paint in this. It's um, it, it was relevant like 15 years ago when people had really low gamut um, monitors. Uh, grayscale is grayscale, shades of grey, black and white. RGB colour is red, green and blue. This is the mode that I recommend that you paint in. Red being, uh, so RGB, red, green and blue. And um, your monitor works by mixing those colours to produce, you know, 16 million different colours. And uh, the more that you mix those colors together, the brighter things get. So closer to white, the more absence of those colors is you just get black. Uh, CMYK refers to the print process, cyan, magenta, yellow, black. And lab color, I'll explain uh, soon. I'll explain it in a minute. So 8-bit. Uh, is still millions of colors, 16 bit is double that, 32 bit is triple that. Um, I wouldn't recommend that you go over 8 bit because your file is just going to get um, unnecessarily big and you really won't notice you're getting a you know, higher range of colors. I'd say this is more for photos when uh, you know, you just have a huge amount of colors in a photo. Whereas in a painting, you're generally going to not have, you know, over a million colors going on in the piece. So, uh, enough about that. Now, palette color modes. Uh, palette color modes is this one. So, our color palette, you find that in window color. Oh, sorry, just quickly. If you do uh, choose a document color mode, you can change it, image mode, change it here. So the color, the color picker slider palette thing, uh, we can change it, you know, whether it's gray, obvious, RGB. So as I mentioned before, the more that you add of these colors, the more it will get to white, the less of these colors that you add the closer we get to black and generally when you use this slider system you're going to have more you're going to have brighter colors most of the time seems to seems to favor that when using this hue saturation brightness this is the one I recommend that you use and it's the one simply because it's the one I use. I'm um, not saying like, I'm a mad artist and should do everything that I do. So I'm just saying that um, it's a palette man because you have, you know, hue, so you can control whether it's green, blue, whatever. Saturation, we can change the sat controlling lighter. So saturation means is it more gray or is it and uh, brightness, also known as value, it's going to change if it's dark. This is why I like this one because I really like to think of color and value, how dark or bright it is. Because generally, if if your values aren't right, your colors aren't going to look right, and that's based on the way it stands um, form and so forth we we tend to recognize form by value shifts and changes okay 
Okay, so that's enough. Oh wait, there's still a couple more here. See them like hey. Sign magenta, yellow, black. Guess you can slider system. I don't. Um, lab color. This one's a bit more vague, so I'll explain it a bit better. Lightness is the L channel. Dark or bright. A refers to the. Oh, so A and B are two different color channels. A is green and magenta. B is blue and yellow. So you can adjust these. And similar to the RGB slider system, tend to tend to achieve more saturated and intense colors with less effort than if you're in the hue saturation brightness slider. So if you want some cool colors, play around with this slider system. It tends to tends to lens, lend itself to that. So RGB spectrum is this is changing this ramp here they call it. So you can change it to grayscale ramp. CMYK so forth. And now looking at swatches. So swatches are basically little squares of colour that you can save in. So you can see here all these little squares of colour. If I adjust that you'll see why it looks a bit strange. So it's a little colour wheel. This was made by an artist named Kim who's a concept artist in Australia and his other name is Sketchling and he made this uh, color wheel swatch system and you can get that on cghub.com and it's posted in tools photoshop section and swatches and it's called improved color wheel so it's basically a customized um, color wheel so he's added like white in here so that it works as a thing when you resize it but also I have down here these are some artist colors so traditional colors such as cobalt blue cadmium red so forth and you can get that um, I think on the same website and if you want to know the the names of all these because you can't really tell by the color you go oh okay that's red ochre and just select that okay so we can make our own palette by just make a new document you can make it pretty small like 400 by 400 pixels and then you know I might want to make my own palette from this one so some emerald green bit of cerulean blue some maroon so just painting, painting these on now I've got a little palette here and then if I want to use it in my painting just shrink down the window a bit And then using Alt, I can just select my colors from this one and then use it in, in my painting. And then I can mix the colors by just overlapping them a bit with my pen pressure opacity and using the eyedropper again to select the in-between color getting a mix of that. So use Alt to choose your eyedropper because that way it will toggle it on or off just by holding down Alt and then it will automatically switch back to your previous tool in this case the brush. 
So that's a really handy tip for mixing and blending your colours. And I really use it constantly. And if you ever watch um, time lapse videos of people painting, you'll see them constantly colour picking to mix their colours. You can see I can really blend blend this area of the forehead by using that that technique. And yeah, that's that's really all there is to it. If you have more questions, um, just leave a comment on YouTube and look out for more videos to come. Making videos and posting videos five days a week, and we get to the really fun stuff soon and just uh, getting some fundamentals out of the way and then we can uh, take take what we learn and apply that to some more more complicated stuff like, like portrait painting and this stuff so look out for them hope you learned something and um, yeah stay creative